at a time when many economists believe the BOC may be done hiking. But once again, it's that inflation worry that is at the center of this story. In fact, the bank now sees inflation at around 3% next year. That is hotter than its previous estimate and certainly remains above the bank's own target range. Here's Bank Governor Tiff Macklem on his reasoning for keeping the bank's options open. We've been very deliberate. We're leaving the door open to further interest rate increases because there is uncertainty uh, about that. And if we see inflationary pressures persist, we are prepared to raise our interest rate further. Beata Currency is the chief economist at TD Bank. She joins us here in the studio with her reaction to what the bank governor had to say today. It was no surprise, I think, for most that we would see rates on hold. Was it a surprise to you to hear him committing to the possibility of another rate hike if need be? Not at all. Um, we're at that point in the cycle where he can't back off the, that hawkish rhetoric. If he were to, then the markets might start prematurely pricing in cuts and yields would fall and that would be counterproductive to the goal they're trying to achieve. So they won't pivot in their view until they are probably within one to two meetings of a change in policy stance. And is that because, I mean, throughout all of this, even though we've seen signs of a deteriorating economy, we keep talking about resilience. Mm -hmm. And, you know, a lot of people, for example, say if there's a suggestion that rates are moving in another direction, all of a sudden you might see a flurry of activity in the housing market and maybe the bank is not ready to see that right now. Yeah, and even Governor Macklin was talking about, if you look at Canadian balance sheets, that uh, unlike Americans, they've spent a lot of their savings Canadians have not. So they have kept the powder dry in order to deal with the higher interest rates. And so if you start to prematurely unwind things, you've actually got a substantial amount of excess savings sitting there ready to go. Okay. Now, when it comes to the fight against inflation, why is it proving so tricky when I think if uh, you'd talked to people a couple of years ago and suggested rates would have risen as much as they have, mm -hmm. that we would have won the fight against inflation? What, what's going on? Well, it looks like, you know, based on even their own analysis, it's almost like the expectations of higher inflation have now become entrenched, which is every central banker's nightmare that um, you're fighting against uh, an entrenched expectation. And you can see this in the corporate pricing behavior that they're referencing, that corporations are passing through um, uh, higher prices with greater frequency than they have historically and to a greater amount, meaning they're not necessarily taking the impact on a reduction in their profit margins. It's getting passed through. And that's because on the other end of it, you have a consumer who's willing to accept those prices because they too have become accustomed to higher prices. So that is the current they're fighting, that they got to break that psychology and that behavior. So yeah, people, businesses have to plan for what they're going to price and they do that you know, they plan now for the future and maybe they're already anticipating they have to work inflation into the picture. There's that psychological impact. But I think everybody also wonders, given how high interest rates have gone and given that there have been some signs of a cooling economy, yeah. what is the trade off? What is the risk of getting inflation right down to the target level if it's going to lead to weakness for the economy and we don't know where the economy yeah. ends up? Listen, they have to trade off the economy for the inflation mandate. Um, they're going to get that inflation down with a two handle. It doesn't have to be perfectly 2%. They probably could live with something like 2, 3, 2, 4 uh, because it's trending in the right direction. But they will have to accept whatever growth sacrifice to the economy comes with that 2% because they are in the fight of their life for, for credibility. And to lose that credibility means that you get stuck in a higher inflation environment and a deterioration of household incomes on a longer term basis. And so they want to preemptively stop that. Um, so they are willing in all probability to you know, have a mild recession if it means you can get inflation anchored. You just don't have to hit 2%. You have to hold it there. It has to be a sustainable pattern. What does that mean for the jobs market, which generally speaking has been resilient? But we hear a lot, a lot of cautious comments yeah. about the jobs market right now. And, mm -hmm. and what, what do you think happens on that front? Well, within our own forecast, we have the unemployment, the Bank of Canada doesn't provide a, a, an unemployment rate forecast. Uh, within our forecast, we do have the unemployment rate rising to 6.7% from 5.5 right now. And what that means is we have a slightly negative job market in the next four quarters, meaning mm. on net job losses. There's only a couple of ways you can get this, right? So you either get it through... Uh, the labor force growing faster than job growth, and that lifts unemployment and also creates slack, or you actually see some degree of job losses. But either way, you got to create slack in order to break that demand cycle. And to the point that the governor was making today, we are seeing the consumer cycle slow down quite a bit. His point was that consumption per capita 
and GDP per capita is flat to down. Um, so they're, they're, the transmission of interest rates is working. It just may not be sufficient at this point in the cycle. So for those who are trying, and look, there's a lot of talk about this, certainly on BNM and Bloomberg, but for those who are trying to figure out what all that means for interest rates, say, a year out, mm -hmm. there are some who are talking about, as the bank navigates the rest of this year and, and, and the beginning of next year, that there could be a turn in rates at some point. What, yeah. What's your own forecast at this point? Yeah, like I would say by the second half of next year, if we are in this period of um, uh, like no growth to maybe negative with a job market that is, uh, you know, flat to down, that that would provide enough comfort for the central bank to start cutting rates. Now, I think it's really important for people to understand the, the rate at which rates went up will not be the rate at which they come down. They are going to be extra cautious. Um, and this is where you get notions of policy mistakes being, being talked about. So they will move in very small increments and in a cautious way to make sure they don't unwind the progress they've done.